So I drew something up. This is right here is a little sketch of what I kind of want my desk to look like. I'm moving into a new house, which also means I'm moving into a new office. And I just want to show y'all a little bit of what I sketched up here. So obviously this isn't the whole room, but I'll try to lay it out for y'all. Obviously we have two desks right here to form an L. This desk right here is up against a wall, and this desk has space in between the desk and the wall, and I think this is where I'll be able to put some of my lighting equipment, this camera, and then I'll be able to record from this angle, and then from this angle if I ever so desire. There's also a wall right here where I think this will butt up against, but I kind of want another desk, maybe not as deep as these two desks, but something a little bit thinner for essentially a shelf that is at desk level that will kind of come along this wall all the way down the wall. I think it would be nice to have kind of like a U desk, if you will. And what you'll see on the desks here is you'll have my big mouse pad with a keyboard and my mouse. I want to get an extra monitor in addition to the one I currently have. I want to have my mic kind of hidden by the monitor. So if I'm recording from this angle over here, you can't really see the mic too much. I don't want it protruding out like from in between this desk and the camera and the monitors. I think it's a cleaner look to have those over here. And I have two nice little speakers that I kind of want to put up on shelves, give myself a little bit more room on my desk. This right here is where I thought I wanted to put my mic. Still may be an option, but I just X'd that out so I could put my mic over here. And then this is my PC case, and this is what we're going to be going over today. So here is my current PC. First thing you may notice is that it is a really big computer case. And the second thing you may notice is that this is a very old PC. I probably built this back in 2014, 2015. To put it in perspective, let's talk about the specs in this thing. So this has an i5 4690K Intel Core processor. That's set in a Z97 motherboard, a GTX 970 GPU on it, and 8 gigabytes of RAM. You don't have to cry for me just yet. I'm upgrading this thing. I just always thought I was going to upgrade my RAM from 8GB to 16 or maybe even to 32, but shortly after I put this whole entire build together, the new DDR4 RAM, at the time it was new, came out and I just never felt like investing more money into outdated RAM, even though that's exactly what I needed. Now if you have your own ATX PC build, this computer case isn't necessarily that big, but I feel like in today's day and age we don't need a computer case that is about 2 foot tall. I would like to look at something closer to the micro ATX cases or the mini ITX cases. Now those are the sizes of the motherboard and the smaller the motherboard, the smaller case you'll be able to use. Now there are a few downfalls to one over the other, we're going to discuss that. But today I have three builds on PC Part Picker that I want to show you. all So the three builds we're going to be going over today is the My High End Custom Build, which is the ATX build this one right here, my custom build micro ATX, and then my custom build mini ITX. Now before I dive into these builds, I should probably talk about why I'm building this PC. One, I want to build a new PC. This one's kind of outdated obviously, but what I'm going to be doing with the PC is a lot of video editing, some photo editing, gaming, streaming, and coding. Let's start off with the regular ATX build, my high-end custom build. So for my CPU, I chose the Mac Daddy Intel Core i9-9900K, 3.6 gigahertz, eight core processor. This has a boost clock up to five gigahertz, and I think that'll do just fine. I'm currently maxing out my CPU at any given moment with whatever I do on my current computer, and I don't want that to be a problem anymore. So what I'm doing is going with the best CPU on the market within my budget. That way I don't have to worry about my CPU maxing out. CPU cooler. Now, although I am having the i9, I decided not to get a brand new CPU cooler because I currently have in this system a Corsair H100i, not version two, but version one. And maybe I should do a little bit more research, but I'm fairly certain that that Corsair CPU will do just fine with the i9. Please correct me if I'm wrong. The motherboard is the MSI Z390. Of course, this has 11, uh, 1151 chipset. I have been debating between this MSI motherboard and the ASUS Prime motherboard simply because it's a $77 difference and this one looks a whole hell of a lot cooler. But I'm too cheap. I don't th I don't know if it's necessarily worth it to get something to look so cool that I probably may even be putting under my desk. So it's essentially the same exact motherboard, different BIOS, 
different look. But for now, we're sticking with the Z390 because budget friendly. Memory is G Skill, 32 gigabytes, DDR4, 3200. Now, what you'll notice is this is two 16 gigabyte sticks, and this motherboard is a four stick RAM motherboard, right? Four slot motherboard. So if I wanted to upgrade and double my RAM and get the same exact RAM again, I could. But for now, I don't mind only quadrupling the RAM from eight gigabytes of my current system to 32 gigabytes in my future system. Oh, and I wanna make sure that we understand what software is necessary when having this PC build, and that is this, look, would you look at that right there? Skillshare, zero dollars? Like, that's not a bad deal. You get two months of Skillshare Premium for free if you're one of the first 500 to click the link in the top of the description and sign up to Skillshare. It's so crazy that they would just throw this at the top of the choose software section. If you don't know what Skillshare is, it is an online learning platform for creatives like you and I, whether you're a designer, photographer, videographer, coder, what have you. Ooh, I don't wanna forget business, freelancing, that type of stuff as well. They have courses on all of it, where in all honesty, a lot of their courses take you less than too much to complete. So if you sign up for too much for free, you're able to get through at least a single course and you'll be well on your way to learning a whole lot more about your particular industry. It's a very good bang for your buck, especially considering it's free for the first two months. But even if you decide to pay afterwards, it's only $15 per month and less than $9 per month if you pay annually. That's a savings of 45%. So please be sure to support Skillshare for supporting the channel. Click the link in the top of the description, get Skillshare Premium for free. On with the rest of the builds. Storage is a whole lot cheaper than what it used to be, so I don't mind spending $78 on a nice 860 EVO 500 gigabyte SSD. Do I need it? No, if I needed to take out $78 worth of this particular build, this is what I'll take out. But it would be really, really nice to have. And video card. Now this has been one that I've really been debating between this one right here, the GT, uh, GeForce RTX 2060 six gigabyte and the GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. The memory is the same on these. The core clock is higher on the 1660 Ti. However, on all of the benchmarks and tests and whatnot, it shows the 2060 as being a better GPU, but this one is $70 cheaper. For this particular build, we're just gonna keep the 2060 simply because I have it in the budget. This total actually comes in a little bit cheaper than the total of my other builds, which is around 1750. So I don't mind spending a little bit extra money if this one is indeed better. And then for the case, obviously I would use this case. For the power supply, I have a EVGA Gold Plus 750 watt power supply. So I think I should be fine there. I'll get Windows 10 and stop using Windows 8. You're welcome. And I want to get another one of these monitors, which is the ASUS PB278Q. All I want is to be able to have a video or something running on my second screen while I'm doing work on my primary screen. Many of y'all know is that whenever I edit a video, I like to have like a Twitch stream or something going on in the background because it makes it feel a little bit less lonely. I just like it. And then once I do some of my Twitch streams, I'll be able to not have my MacBook sitting on the desk, but instead have everything on Twitch opened up in the secondary screen while I'm playing the video game on the primary screen. And that should be it. Maybe I should add in some of the, uh, what is it called? The gray stuff that goes between CPU and CPU cooler, thermal paste. I should probably get some of that, but that's a couple bucks. And for peripherals, I already have everything I need. Now on to the micro ATX build. Let's go in the edit part list view again. Of course, we're gonna be going with the same CPU for reasons I previously expressed. This is a micro ATX motherboard. It's this Z390. And of course, I'm looking at the micro ATX motherboards, not the mini ITX just yet. And the reason I chose this one is because I like the look of it better than the ASUS. They're essentially the same motherboard except different BIOS and uh, just, you know, a $5.40 price difference. And if I needed to cut off $40 from my total build, I would 100% go with this gigabyte one right here. The memory is the same, the storage is the same. The video card here is the 1660 Ti, simply because I didn't want that extra $70 added onto the budget because that would throw my build over the $1,800 mark. And I just don't see the benefit in spending 70 extra dollars for the 2060 instead of just getting the 1660 Ti. If someone could really help me out with the whole video card thing, I don't know which one is the best bang for my buck in the neighborhood of $300, give or take 
$100. The case, for some reason, I just really like this, uh, the NZXT H cases, whatever they're called. They just look real nice to me. This has a much bigger window than the predecessor right here, so I can see all of the components, hence why I got a slightly cooler motherboard in this one, simply because if I'm gonna have that nice big open case, I need to make sure I have cool RGB motherboard here. Power supply, I'd use the same one that's currently in here. Microsoft Windows 10, the monitor, so on and so forth, 1734. Now let's hop on over to the mini ITX build. This is the one I think I want. This is one I think I want the most. I do plan on overclocking the CPU, so that may be an issue, but... All right, so the CPU is the same. But the CPU cooler, I should probably make sure that my existing CPU cooler fits in the mini ITX build, which if this one right here fits, it is the same exact size as my current CPU cooler, that should be fine. Compatibility, good to go. All right then. Now the motherboard. What did I say about getting all this fancy RGB? Well, this build is a fancy RGB. I'm gonna specify mini ITX, we're gonna specify Z390. And these are the five that we are left with. Sure, I could save $70 and go with the cheapest one right here. It's essentially the same motherboard, just different BIOS and doesn't look as cool, but I wanna make mine look cool. I'm gonna make the mini ITX look pretty badass. I could go with the Gigabyte and save myself about $45, but this one, I don't know, this one just looks really good. I just really like it. I don't know what it is about. I know there are other RG asus motherboards for the other builds up here but just look at that thing man that is a good looking mini itx what about the giga see it this looks sick too oh the oris is so nice look at that uh, all right well that's going to have to do some debate in there i'm still going to leave the asus motherboard on the on the board here for the time being and for this one, I changed things up a little bit. I spent a little bit extra money and I went with the G-Skill Trident Z RGB 32 gigabyte DDR4 3200 memory. This is the same exact, essentially the same exact memory except for this is the Trident Z instead of the Rip Jaws V or five, don't know how they pronounce it. It is both two 16 gigabyte sticks, both DDR4 3200 memory, but this is RGB, mini ITX, I think it would look sick. Storage is the same, video card is the same as the previous build, the micro ATX, and then the case is the same as the micro ATX, but a smaller version. This is the H400 on the micro ATX, this is the H200 mini ITX. Windows 10, same monitor. And this comes in at a whopping $1,733. If I really wanted to reduce that price under $1,700, I would just come in here and get the Gigabyte motherboard. I just don't know. I just don't know. Ugh. And that's it for the three PC builds. Like I said, I'm leaning more and more towards the mini ITX as the days go on. I just feel like that build is a build for me. If there's any impediments, like I understand overclocking with the lack of fans compared to a big system like that, maybe a little bit, a little bit off. I need to make sure that everything is, is, is well ventilated and whatnot. But if you have your two cents that you want to share with me, please do. Because I know a lot of y'all are more well versed on PC parts and PC builds than I. I built one PC over four years ago, so that's kind of where I sit. If you guys like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you disliked it, hit that dislike button twice. Be sure to subscribe if you aren't already. I do plan to make a small mini series out of this whole PC build process. So probably only comprise of like two or three videos, but nonetheless, it'll be fun. And until next time, guys, have a good one. Peace.